And well, up until the next video, I guess have a flammable dab. See ya. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. You see, it's the new year now, and we really have to start off slowly. Let's start off by bringing a dead meme back. Okay, first goal of the year is done. That's already quite good. Hashtag bring the dead back from the dead. <laughs> the dead dead. Today, we would like to talk about the Taylor series expansion for the sine of x. To be precise, the Maclaurin series expansion, meaning the Taylor series at x not being equal to zero. And it's completely similar to the cosine Taylor series expansion. So what you want to do, we want to express our sine <coughs> of x as nothing but an infinite series running from n equals to zero to infinity. In this case, of the nth derivative of the sine. So f of x is our sine of x over n factorial times x to the nth power. Okay, this is what we want to do. We can write it out once again a little bit. So the first part is just f of 0 over 0 factorial plus f prime of 0 over 1 factorial times x to the first power plus f double prime of 0 x squared over 2 factorial plus da da da. Many, many, infinitely many more terms after that. What we want to do now, we want to see if we can find a pattern in the derivatives of the sine evaluated at zero. So let's start off with sine of zero. Let's start off slow. Sine of zero, well, it's just zero. So that was easy. First derivative of sine is the cosine evaluated at zero. Well, that's easy. This is just one. Then the derivative of the cosine is the second derivative of the sine, which is nothing but negative sine at the point zero is just, well, zero. Let's move on. Now we have negative cosine as the third de derivative of zero. It's nothing but negative one. One more iteration just with the cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so the derivative of negative cosine is just the sine evaluated at zero, which is once again zero. And you see, we are going to start off this um, circle once again this argument. So we are going in circles basically. We started off with the sine, ended up with the sine, and we can move on like this. So you see we can find a certain pattern. Why not plug all the values into here? So you see on the zero derivative, the function itself evaluated at zero, this is just going to vanish. On the first derivative at zero, it's well just going to be one over one factorial times x to the first power. Let's put it that way. This term is going to vanish. Second derivative is zero evaluated at zero. Third derivative, so plus x to the third power over three factorial. This derivative is negative one. So we have negative x to the third power. And we can move on. So the next term would vanish. Why not rewrite it like this right here? And then the fifth term would be, well, x to the fifth power over 5 factorial, because you would get just a regular one once again. One more iteration, negative x to the 7th power over 7 factorial plus da da da, going on to infinity. So you see this is just a pattern that we are going to get, similarly to the cosine function. Now we would like to put it into an infinite sum notation, meaning we are going to end up with an infinite sum once again, running from n equals to well, it does depend. We can start at zero under certain conditions to infinity. So you see what we are doing. We are only taking the odd terms all the time. So one and three and five and seven. Meaning also here in the factorial, we are going to end up with two n plus one kind of two n plus one factorial. And we have x to the two n plus one power. So you see, this is quite easy. You can check this for yourself. If you plug in zero into here, this is x to the first power over, well, one factorial, this right here. If you plug one into here, this is x to the third power over three factorial in this case, but with a negative sign right here. So just like with the cosine, we have to have a negative one to the nth power up here where on all even terms it's just a regular one, just like here and here, and on all odd terms we're going to end up with a negative sign. 
And this does the trick. This is the Taylor series expansion for our sine, respectively. So you see, the sine right here is kind of the odd part of something and the cosine is the even part of a polynomial in infinite series. Of which one exactly we are going to talk about soon. I thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you want to support the channel a bit, you know how you can do it. And well, up until the next video, I guess have a flammable Depp. See ya.